Hello hockey fans and welcome back to another video. The East Coast Hockey League is widely regarded to be the third tier of professional hockey in North America. Sitting comfortably below the AHL in its overall talent level, and with a number of their teams affiliated to NHL franchises, the ECHL may not be the most premier league out there, but it's still home to some pretty good hockey players. After all, guys like Kyle Clifford, Jordan Binnington and Yanni Gould are all ECHL alumni, and they've been crowned Stanley Cup champions during their careers. When it comes to the ECHL champions though, the league follows the same playoff format and a similar set of traditions to their major league counterparts. Once the commissioner has awarded the Kelly Cup to the champions of the ECHL postseason, the winning team then spend the summer months celebrating their success with the trophy in their hands, keep the cup within their organisation to start the following regular season, before returning the trophy to the league at some point in the year, in order for it to be prepared for the winner of next year's playoffs. However, thanks to one team's actions a couple of years ago, this seemingly routine affair would quickly spiral into one of the most amusing and petty incidents the hockey world has seen in quite a while. This is the story of the Kelly Cup heist. Before we begin, this video is brought to you by Manscaped. Manscaped is the number one provider of men's below the belt grooming trusted by over 2 million customers worldwide thanks to their precision engineered tools that help you take care of what's down there. Now you've heard me talk about Manscaped's wide variety of high quality products over the last few months, but I think it's time to bring out the big guns now and introduce you to the performance package. The ultimate bundle in men's hygiene, the performance package includes Manscaped's iconic Lawnmower 3.0, several bottles of their liquid formulations, as well as the Weed Whacker, an ear and nose hair trimmer designed to tackle even the toughest of jobs. It even comes with a fancy travel bag and a pair of anti-chafing boxes too, so you're really getting a bang for your buck here, folks. If all of that isn't enticing enough for you though, every purchase made on manscaped.com goes towards their contributions to the Testicular Cancer Society. So not only are you tackling all of your grooming needs, you're also supporting a great cause. So if you want to try the performance package for yourself, help support the channel a little bit further, or play your part in the battle against testicular cancer, head on over to manscaped.com and use the promo code oddmanrush20 for 20% off your order plus free shipping. That's manscaped.com and promo code oddmanrush20 for 20% off your order plus free shipping. Manscaped, refining the gentleman. But anyway, back to the video. In order to tell this ridiculous tale, let me first introduce you to the Colorado Eagles. The Eagles currently serve as the AHL affiliate to the Colorado Avalanche, but that wasn't always the case. So allow me to give you a brief overview of their franchise's history, so we are all up to date with where they have come from, and how they managed to play a pivotal role in this whole ordeal. The Colorado Eagles were founded in 2003 by former Montreal Canadiens forward and six-time Stanley Cup champion Ralph Backstrom and began their life as an expansion franchise in the Central Hockey League. Though they would have to prove their worth against the already established teams in the league, the Eagles would show that they were more than capable of holding their own, as they made the postseason in their debut year and even won the CHL Playoff Championship in just their sophomore season. In fact, during their first eight years of existence, the Eagles would win two CHL playoff championships, three regular season titles, five conference titles, and six division titles. So yeah, the team was pretty good. This consistent success in such a short span of time led Colorado to try their luck higher up the pecking order, as on May 31st, 2011, it was announced that the Eagles would be joining the East Coast Hockey League as they had been accepted as an expansion franchise for the upcoming 11-12 ECHL season. Despite once again being the new kids on the block, the league's newest expansion franchise had no intentions of serving as a placeholder at the bottom of the standings. Over their first five ECHL seasons, the Eagles would finish third place in their division or higher on four different occasions and made it to the playoffs every single year, but they were unable to go all the way as they were knocked out in the first round every time. 
That is, until the 1617 season, when Colorado posted a 16-4 record during the postseason, swept the South Carolina Stingrays in the finals, and lifted their franchise's first ever Kelly Cup championship. So in just their sixth season in the league, the Eagles had defeated all of their competition in pretty convincing fashion, and had secured their reputation as a legitimate force in the ECHL. Not only did Colorado get their hands on their first league championship, their recent success had also caught the attention of the American Hockey League. With the Vegas Golden Knights joining the NHL for the 17-18 season, the AHL began to wonder whether they too should also add a 31st team, since each of their franchises served as the minor league affiliate for an NHL organization. With Colorado having just swept South Carolina in the finals, and with them looking poised to win another title soon enough, the Eagles were considered to be a prime candidate for this potential opening. These discussions quickly turned into a decision being made on October 10th, 2017, as the AHL announced that the league would be expanding to 31 teams for the 18-19 season, and that the Colorado Eagles would be filling this new spot. So just 15 years after their creation, the Eagles had won a number of championships, been promoted to a higher level of competition twice, and was now getting ready to join one of the strongest and most reputable leagues in the entire hockey world. Though they would soon be moving on to bigger and better things, Colorado would make sure that they went out with a bang. The 17-18 ECHL season would see the Eagles look to keep their foot on the gas as they aim to repeat their success from the year prior. Not only would the defending champions clinch their second division title in the last three seasons, they would also return to the Kelly Cup Finals after posting a 12-5 record through the first three rounds. Now if you thought they would be unable to repeat their success a second time around, you would be mistaken, as a shorthanded goal by Colorado forward Gabriel Verpalst, with just two and a half minutes left to play in Game 7 of the series, would give Colorado a 3-2 victory and help them lift their second consecutive Kelly Cup. So in their final season in the league, Colorado had ended their tenure by becoming just the fourth team in ECHL history to win back-to-back -back championships. Talk about a solid closing statement. Now it is tradition that once the Kelly Cup is awarded, the winning team gets to hold on to the trophy for both the summer months and the start of the following regular season before the award is returned to the league before the end of the calendar year. That way, the ECHL has ample time to prepare the cup in order for it to be awarded to the next playoff champions during the end of the following postseason. However, this simple handover would end up being a lot more complicated than anyone would expect. On May 31st, 2019, former ECHL commissioner Patrick J. Kelly, whom the league's playoff trophy is named after, appeared on Fox Sports Radio in Toledo to discuss the 2019 Kelly Cup final series that was currently taking place between the Toledo Walleye and the Newfoundland Growlers. When the hosts of the show asked what was being done with the trophy as it awaited to be handed to the new champions, the commissioner Emeritus dropped one hell of a bombshell. Patrick revealed that the ECHL no longer had possession of the Kelly Cup, as the Colorado Eagles had never given it back. Kelly then stated how he couldn't believe that Colorado had kept the trophy for all this time, and that he had never heard of anything like this happening in the history of hockey. This news was quickly followed by an official statement from the ECHL just a day later on June 1st, which outlined how the Eagles management had agreed to return the trophy back to the league in December of 2018, but for whatever reason, the arrangement was not fulfilled. Not only that, the league also stated that they had been forced to create a brand new Kelly Cup and reinscribe the names of all the players, coaches, and staff members who had won the award over the last 30 years in order to give the upcoming 2019 champions a trophy that was as authentic to the original as possible. To conclude their statement, the ECHL directly addressed the Eagles themselves, saying that they hoped Colorado intended to return the cup at some point, as they wanted the trophy to join the previous two models that had both been made part of hockey history by being enshrined in the Hockey Hall of Fame. 
So not only had the Eagles held on to the ECHL's championship trophy for longer than they had originally agreed to, they still hadn't returned it nearly a year later, and their now former league had been forced to go out of their way to make a brand new cup. And who said minor league hockey was boring? Oh, but we're not done there, folks. Soon after the radio interview and the statement by the ECHL were released, Colorado Eagles owner Martin Lind released his own statement surrounding his version of the events. In it, Lind claims that the Eagles had made numerous attempts to return the cup to the league, but ECHL management had chosen to ignore their requests. Not only that, Lind also mentioned that the cup still remained in Colorado and that the league had full knowledge of the entire situation, meaning they believed that they had put the ball in the ECHL's court and were waiting for them to make a decision on how to resolve this. So nearly a calendar year after the trophy had initially been handed out, and roughly six months since it was supposed to have been returned, the two parties were clearly at an impasse. With the ECHL claiming that Colorado didn't follow up on their plan, and with the Eagles claiming that their numerous attempts to return the trophy had been ignored by the league, it seems as if we have a real he said, she said situation on our hands. If you want my opinion, I personally think that the fault primarily lies with Colorado here, as they seem to be the ones exacerbating the situation by refusing to return the trophy. Sure, there may have been a lack of communication somewhere down the line regarding the trophy's return, but if the Eagles really wanted to give the cup back and follow through on the plan that they had agreed to with the league, then they were more than capable of doing so. I mean, they held on to the trophy for over half a year after its original return date. There was plenty of time to send it back before the playoffs began, you know. It's also worth mentioning that the Eagles seem to have no problem returning the cup after their 2017 win the year prior, so I get the feeling that there may have been something that happened between their two championship wins which prompted them to forego repeating the process a second time around, whether that be their move to the AHL or a change in relationship between the team and the league. And besides, it isn't the league's responsibility to chase the championship team around until they decide they are ready to give it back to them. The onus is on the winning team to return the trophy when they agree to, not hold it for ransom until their demands are met. Regardless of who is or isn't to blame for all this though, ultimately, Colorado still had possession of the Kelly Cup well after they should have, while the ECHL had to go out of their way to make a brand new trophy for their league. Though the two sides still didn't see eye to eye, this standoff would eventually come to an end. On June 4th, 2019, the New Finland Growlers defeated the Toledo Walleye in Game 6 of the Finals to clinch the series four games to two and lift their first Kelly Cup Championship in franchise history. Though they would be handed a remade and remastered trophy for the event, the winning team would raise the cup above their heads and skate their lap of honour just as proudly as if it were the original. I mean, they just won the playoff championships. I don't think they're going to complain too much, do you folks? After that, any news regarding the Eagles or the previous Kelly Cup would go quiet for the next few months, as the Growlers celebrated their victory and the ECHL began preparations for the upcoming 2019-20 season. That is, until October 10th, 2019, when it was revealed that Newfoundland would be celebrating their opening night with two Kelly Cups in attendance. According to the reports, the Eagles' ownership group had sent the previous trophy directly to the Growlers over the off-season so they could celebrate with the real thing once opening night rolled around. Amongst this news, Eagles owner Martin Lind stated how he was excited to put the whole situation behind him and he couldn't think of a better ending than by passing the trophy to a classy organisation like the Growlers. Lind also mentioned how the cup was delivered in perfect condition and that it was sent directly to Newfoundland so they could waste little time celebrating their well-deserved victory. So roughly a year and a half after the Eagles had clinched their second straight ECHL championship and after several months of rumours, accusations and bitter stalemate, the Kelly Cup heist was finally over. The organisation had passed the trophy to its new rightful owners, and the league once again had their award back. Don't you just love a happy ending? 
Now that we have reached the end of our tale and we all know what happened, there's still one loose end that's been left unanswered. Why did the Eagles decide to return the cup when they did? Why did Colorado hand the award straight to the Growlers instead of sending it back to the league? Based on the events that I've outlined in this video, it's possible that this whole ordeal may have come about thanks to a deteriorating relationship between Eagles owner Martin Lind and the ECHL's management. Perhaps there had been some bad blood brewing during Colorado's final season in the league, and their move to the AHL at the end of the year gave them the perfect opportunity to get the last laugh. In the midst of editing this video, I have found an article written by the Denver Post back on June 7th, 2019, which states how Eagles owner Martin Lind decided to hold the Kelly Cup hostage from the ECHL, over $500,000 worth of exit fees, and up to a million dollars of expansion fees. According to the article, Lind refused to give the Kelly Cup back to the league as he accused the ECHL of cheating him out of up to $800,000 due to the league making an expansion fee sale to the Newfoundland Growlers, which was the team that replaced the Eagles in the ECHL after Colorado moved to the AHL, instead of letting the two teams negotiate a transfer fee instead. If the Eagles and the Growlers had negotiated a transfer fee, then Colorado could have earned up to $800,000 in the deal. But since the ECHL decided to give Newfoundland an expansion fee sale of $1 million, Colorado didn't earn a single cent of that deal. In order to recoup some of his losses and get back some of the money he felt he was owed, Lynn said that he offered to return the Kelly Cup to the league for a refund of his $500,000 exit fee, which he had to pay to leave the league and join the AHL. However, once that request was ignored, Lynn decided to keep the cup until the ECHL were willing to recoup him for some of his losses. It feels nice to be proven right, doesn't it? At least we got a pretty entertaining story out of it, eh, folks? And that's the story of the Kelly Cup heist. What do you guys think about this weird yet wonderful tale? Do you think what the Eagles did was unnecessary? Or do you think that the ECHL may have started it earlier in the year and forced their hand? Also, do you have any other crazy hockey stories you would like me to tell on this channel? Let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear what you guys think. But thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you have enjoyed. Please feel free to like, subscribe, share, or watch some of my other videos. Thank you very much for watching, and goodbye. A big thank you to Carl Fairbank, Chris Gadsby, Connor B, Drew Fawcett, Houston NG, Jordan Whitehead, Satan Otaku, The Legacy, Tom from Finland, Twin Sanity Dad, and Worthless Pieces for helping support this video via Patreon. If you too want to help support the channel a little bit further and get a shout out at the end of every future video, make sure you head over to patreon.com slash oddmanrush and become a patron today.